Hey everyone, welcome back to Midnight Med. This video is on antenatal care. Now, antenatal care is the care that's provided to a mother and her baby during a pregnancy. The area is quite complex, but the basic principles to be aware of include to maintain a balanced diet, supplement with folate and iron, as well as calcium and vitamin A if required, and to abstain from alcohol, smoking, and other substance use. Now to cover some key terms I'm going to cover over the course of this video. Anti-D refers to anti-D immunoglobulin, which is given to rhesus factor negative mothers who have rhesus factor positive partners. This is because the baby she's carrying could be positive for rhesus factor, therefore causing her body to produce endogenous antibodies against rhesus factor. As a result, subsequent pregnancies could be at risk of hemolytic disease of the newborn, and as such we give anti-D to prevent the production of these endogenous antibodies. Combined first trimester screening refers to the combination of crown rump length to estimate gestational age, nuchal translucency, beta HCG, and PAP A levels. Nuchal translucency is illustrated on the right hand side with the yellow line approximating the thickness of the nuchal fold. And I've got to apologize, I've gone a little bit over on each side, so you'll have to bear with me there. Now, the normal thickness is less than 3.5 millimeters for a crown rump length from 45 to 84 millimeters and a measurement in excess of this might suggest the presence of an aneuploidy like trisomy 21. Beta-HCG and PAP-A levels are reflective of the likelihood of developing trisomy 13, 18, or 21. Beta-HCG levels are increased in trisomy 21, and decreased in trisomies 13 and 18, while PAP-A levels are decreased in all three. Non-invasive prenatal testing is similar to combined first trimester screening in that it can help identify the likelihood of the fetus having trisomy 13, 18, or 21. Cell-free fetal DNA found floating in the mother's circulation is extracted and the measurement of the fetal fraction gives an indication of the likelihood of these aneuploidies. Symphysis fundal height, also simply known as the fundal height, is the measurement from the pubic symphysis to the uterine fundus. From weeks 20 to 36, roughly speaking, the measurement of the fundal height in centimetres should be approximately equal to the gestational age of the baby, give or take 2 centimetres. There's an illustration of fundal heights at varying gestational ages on the right-hand side of the sheet here. And finally, fetal Doppler is the use of ultrasound to monitor heart rate and pattern, and there's an image of the Doppler instrument used on the right-hand side as well. So I split the process of antenatal care into what we might expect at each of the three trimesters. Please note that this video outlines what tends to happen locally, so be aware that this timeline can vary depending on where you live and practice. The first visit is generally undertaken at the 8-12 to 12 week mark. Blood tests are done, testing for the FBC to identify the presence of anemia and clotting issues, which might warrant supplementation with iron, for example. There's also testing for the vitamin D level from these blood tests, which might require supplementation also. There's testing for the blood group and presence of antibodies in the blood. And here we're mainly checking for rhesus factor so we can identify the need to administer anti-D. We also screen for HIV, rubella, and syphilis because these have implications for the development of the baby and the management of the pregnancy. At the first visit, the dating ultrasound is organized and screening through combined first trimester screening or non-invasive prenatal testing is organized. The influenza vaccination is administered as well. For those deemed to be at risk of developing gestational diabetes based on their blood pressure, BMI, and past history, an oral glucose tolerance test is organized for the third trimester. After the first visit, the dating ultrasound and screening tests take place. Note that in the event of a positive result on screening, we might see a follow-up chorionic villus sampling or amniocentesis. In the second trimester, the first visit would be at around 16 weeks to review results from the screening tests. Based on these results, as well as blood pressure and BMI, we would also identify the risk of preeclampsia and start aspirin if so required. Between the 18th and 20th weeks of gestation, an ultrasound morphology scan is performed to check the baby from head to toe and identify any abnormalities. Between the 20th and 22nd week, a clinic visit is made to review the results of the ultrasound as well as check the weight, blood pressure, fundal height, and the fetal heart using Doppler ultrasound, and also blood tests for anemia, 
and urinalysis to check for potential urinary tract infections, as well as the presence of proteinuria, which might signal the presence of preeclampsia. In the third trimester, the oral glucose tolerance test is undertaken between the 26th and the 28th weeks, potentially as early as the 24th week in some. As noted, this is to check for the presence of gestational diabetes. At the 28th week, a visit is made to undertake routine measurements, that is weight, blood pressure, fundal height, Doppler, and abdominal palpation for the position of the baby within the uterus. Anti-D is given here where required. At the 31st and 34th weeks, visits are made where these routine measurements are taken again. And at the 36th week, a visit is made, and in addition to these routine measurements, anti-D is given where required, and a low vaginal swab is performed to check for the presence of group B streptococcal infection. Fetal position is also confirmed, and it is noted whether the baby is in breach, and a maneuver like an external cephalic version is required. Plans for labour and birth are also discussed. Routine measurements are taken during visits in the 38th and 39th week, and at the 40th week, routine measurements are taken, and a discussion is made about the induction of labour at some point. So that's a very brief overview of what antenatal care looks like for a pregnant woman. Hope you found that useful. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram at MidnightMed1200 for more, and we'll see you in the next video.